Mike, we're sitting here at Inver Park. How does it feel to finally be here in Larne? It's wonderful. I can't, I can't describe it. I, I haven't been kind of this excited about a game coming up since my beloved St. Paul Saints several years ago. That's what it feels like. You spent a number of days in the town around the club at the Lord Academy of Sport and as you say, counting down to the, the game against Glentorn on, on Friday night. What sort of feeling have you got for the place, for the town and for the club so far? Rock solid foundation. That's what I keep thinking of the whole time is that I watch, you know, in the training academy, the drills are regimented. You know, there's a, there's a certain joy to the order of them. And then you go inside and there's desks full of computers and great food served. And the, the feeling is this is, a, this is going to be a small soccer factory, you know. People can come because they have excruciatingly good talent, but they could come just because they wanted to get a great education and play a game they love. So I think any time you find a, an endeavor or a business that is founded in passion and it's a kid's game I don't think you can go wrong yeah and how did it get to the point that we're here how did it get to the point that uh, you've taken time and you've invested in our football club and you're as excited as you clearly are and you're looking forward to a game as much as you are how did we get to this point I suppose for those who don't yet know well <laughs> the one thing is you know the managing partner he can be very persuasive. <laughs> and the moment I talk to him on a very impersonal Zoom call, you know, I hate Zoom calls, and this joy, this, this passion for this project came through. And, you know, and that's difficult. I mean, you, of all people, you've done enough of me and to know who wants to do another Zoom call. But I thought, man, this guy is really into it. And the more I have wandered around and met people, the more I feel like this is where I want to be. And people say, well, is this a short term? Is this an investment? It's an investment in our life. You know, my son's been over and loved it and my wife's here with me now we're here for you know not a hit and run but 10 days and uh to get to see a game and to get to meet all the people this is <laughs> and you won a championship last year god that's going to make it the most hated team in the league you're going to go from you know being the harbor rats to <laughs> <laughs> suddenly you got the bullseye on your back so I, it's the best of all worlds the way i see it yeah uh, people might know you from the, the Netflix documentary, Saint of Second Chances, for those maybe who weren't there on Thursday night or haven't had an opportunity to find out as much about you. Tell us about your background in sport. Tell us about your, your, your background so far. Well, it, it was Night Train that, that came up with the format, which was the idea of he's a fourth generation vec making his living in baseball, 120 years. This is all we've ever done. We're too stupid to do anything else, I guess. I don't, I don't know, but, but I worked for four major league teams. I blew up some disco records in the late 70s. I was banished to the hinterland. It was kind of like T.S. Eliot's Wasteland. And Bill Murray and some of my partners brought me back um, in 1990 to run the Miracle and the Saints. And so my grandfather was president of the Cubs. My dad ran the Milwaukee Brewers when they were a minor league team, the White Sox. The St. Louis Browns, which were the worst team in the history of Major League Baseball. And he won a championship with the Cleveland Indians. So it's, it's just a continuation. And that's what speaks to me about, about being here. In, in, sitting in Inver Park with all this, all this history, um, you know, it's very similar to how I feel. I look at this and I see the middle of a grand experiment. You know, when we get the, when we get the new grandstand in, this is going to be just a sweet little park and the pitch is beautiful and so, I spent all my time trying to create ball clubs that where the fans were the most important people. And here I'm walking into that. I don't have to do anything except savor it and, and enjoy it. It strikes me that you, 
you want to put smiles on people's faces. You've you've done that through through baseball and through sports in the United States, and I suppose you see the opportunity to, to continue to do that here with with football in Larne and Northern Ireland as well. Is that fair to say? I think with the development of talent um, that you all have harnessed here, I think it's the beginning of of a large run. And you know, I I've never been very good at at much. But I can feel the excitement. I can feel what's happening in this town. And that's really important. It was the same feeling in the early years that I had with the Saints in St. Paul. St. Paul was the second city. Everybody knows where Minneapolis is because it's got an airport. Nobody knows where St. Paul is. And suddenly they had something that they were very proud of, that they could embrace. And that's exactly what's happening here. And if I can add by having a dumb idea or two, so much the better. And you know, if I don't, I'll, uh, if they don't work, I'll blame them on my son. <laughs> What's a father to do? <laughs> Uh, you mentioned about Night Train. Night Train has, has been here, uh, been here for a match as well, and uh, going by his, his Twitter updates, he was really involved and really invested in the, the club as well. And get the sense that after the, the Glen Torren game and being able to sample a match day, you'll, you'll be pretty similar when you go home. Yeah, I don't think there's any question that uh, we visited Night Train when he was working on Australia, and saw a couple of footy games and a and and a, and a cricket match but this is a game that is worldwide and and don't for a second think underneath all of this there the real attraction to this is the worldwide attraction of soccer i mean it's it's coming we haven't done it very well in the states we haven't managed it the right way but i think that if we can learn from you all how to present this We'll go back and be much better. It won't. I won't be doing that. I'm too old to do that. But my son will be doing that, and it, that will change the way people look at this, at this game. This is already, before the match, a better feel than I've ever sensed in any of the American, you know, pitches. Yeah, it's a strange animal, but much different, much more passionate about. Yeah, and through the conversations and the relationships you've built up with the likes of Kenny and Niall off the pitch and Tiernan and his coaching staff on the pitch, you, you sense that the you know the right people are already in place and you can kind of add to that partnership as the the, the sense of it. Well, you know, we 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 play to one another's weaknesses or strengths depending on. I love to market. I love people. I think that Kenny and I share that. Um, I know that Niall and I do, so if an idea works, it, it, then we can enjoy the success all together. It feels like a family operation, and that's something I do know about. And it, feel, it has that same feel of dedication. And Tiernan's a whole nother deal. I found myself watching him on BBC the other night and thinking, boy, I wish this guy managed the ball club because he was so articulate, he was intense, without being boorish. You know, he, he, he offered insights that only, you know, a coach of his caliber can. It'll be interesting to watch him develop as, as we become the pursued, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's great to be the underdog and rise from the ashes, but once you get on top, how you behave then is even more important. So yeah. I think he's the right guy. Yeah. And just finally, uh, what would you say to somebody watching this who maybe uh, hasn't been to a game or is thinking about coming to a game, thinking about coming to the Glen Torren game or, or one before the end of the season, what would your message be to people and fans like that? I think you better show up or you'll miss something really exciting. And if you don't show up with some frequency, I'm going to come to your home and you don't want that to happen. <laughs> Perfect way to end. Thank you.